Hello, everyone, and welcome to Fandemonium. I am Joe Lorendi. As always, a little uh, little late here on the start today. I apologize about that. Uh, there's got a lot going on, so but we're going to get you started right before the Final Four starts, so you get to watch Fandemonium and then go right into the Final Four, uh, and that's going to be exciting. So I know there's always that like 20 to 30-minute period before it actually starts where you're like, oh, my God, what am I going to do now? Well, you can tune into Fandemonium for the next half an hour because I have a lot of good topics coming at you, and uh, there is going to be no draft talk today. Uh, I know that is the hot topic, but I feel like we're beating it into the ground. Just so much draft talk is happening that I want to step back from it. We still have another month until the draft, a, such a long amount of time that if we just keep on talking about it, it's going to drive us absolutely nuts. The WGR is talking about it. We're talking about it on Buffalo Fanatics. Everybody in Buffalo is talking about it. So we are doing a draft-free show. I will not mention the draft until now, and I'm already seeing a thank God. You're welcome. No more, no draft talk on today's show. We have a month. There is a long time moving forward. So with that being said, that's the it. No, I'm not even going to mutter the word draft, but let's go right into it. We had big news come out of uh, the owners slash coaches slash GM meetings that happened this week. Uh, I was go I was looking forward to doing uh, to t- I was going to talk about this even before. Um, and very nice, Patrick Rosen. Okay, no more. Yeah, draft free show. Let's take a break from that for a second. Uh, but I was going to talk about the new stadium and how we haven't heard anything talked about it at all. And then all of a sudden, while the owners and the coaches were at the the meetings in, in Orlando, I believe it was, uh, there were reports of, of reporters asking the Pagulas and, and Brandon Bean about the future of the Bills and the new stadium and what is happening with that. And I think it's such an interesting topic that we need to dive into as Bills fans. It is so, so important for so many different reasons, even regardless of – of having maybe a possibly a Monday night game and all that good jazz. A new stadium is so important, and let's go, let's go right into it. Uh, and the number one thing. So remember, before the Pagulas, let's let's go all the way back to Ralph Wilson. Uh, unfortunately, passes away. Our obviously our longtime owner, who we love, and. The question is, what is the future of the Buffalo Bills? Are we going to move out to L.A.? Are we going to move up to Toronto? There's a lot of questions surrounding the team. But the New York State did a lot of good things in that time to ensure that the Buffalo Bills were going to stick around for a couple of years. If you remember, they had that commission sent out to see how much a new stadium would possibly cost. Uh, and they did a bunch of different things in order to, uh, in, in order to pretty much in, hopefully ensure that the Bills were going to stay in Buffalo. And then, obviously, Terry Bagula came along and bought the Bills as well, which pretty much guaranteed that they were going to stay in Buffalo. And and then the Pagulas came in, and then we, the Pagulas talked about, oh, we're going to look into new stadium, we're going to do this, we're going to look into locations, this, that, and and the other. And we didn't hear, and then all of a sudden that talk stopped. We didn't hear anything for, it seemed like, two-plus years about the new stadium. And I know me, who's been wanting this new stadium for a long, long time, said, what is going on? What, why are we not talking about this new stadium? Why are we not putting pressure on the Pagulas to at least look into it and to make plans and proposals to the city of Buffalo about a new stadium? Well, we finally got some answers this past weekend. This was just luck. After last week's show, I said, I'm doing one, no draft talk. We're talking about the stadium and the future of the Bills in Buffalo. And, um, you know, and then so after that, uh, after that, all the reports came out this week of them asking. And Terry Bagula pretty much said that we have a lot of, they're talking a lot about it internally, but not on the outside, not to the public, which is strange to me. And I'm not saying, Terry Bagula, that they're not going to have these inside talks and they're not going to – not everything's got to be out to the public. I totally understand that. That's not my point. My point is is we haven't heard anything at all 
over the past uh, two years. And it, it seemed like that's all they were talking about is this new stadium as they continue to pour in more money into Ralph Wilson Stadium. Uh, that's what I still always call it, a slash new era field. And they're doing even more, adding $18 million to upgrade the suites and all that this upcoming uh, year. So they're continuing to put money into the old stadium instead of possibly saving it for money towards a new stadium. So a lot of questions I think need to be asked of the Pagulas, and we're trying to ask those questions, uh, but we're just not getting anywhere because it seemed like they bought the team. It was, we're, we want to build a new stadium. And uh, we'll go from there. And, and Ryan, I under, I'm going to get to that in a little bit. I understand that people love the stadium. I love that stadium too. But i got to give you reasons on why we need a new one and then possible locations. But it's so crucial to the future of the Bills. And we'll just go right into it of why it's so important that we need one. Besides, Michael, you're right. Besides for it being old and outdated. Now, I understand since Terry Pagula – now owns the team. The team is staying here. No doubt about that. It'll be there as long as he owns the team. I don't know his plans, uh, you know, afterwards, but hopefully he is a long time of owning the Buffalo Bills. And that's why I want him to start on this stadium. Now, let me, let me give you the reasons why even just throw away that. Yeah. That even if you like the old stadium, if you like the new stadium, you need a new stadium for these different reasons. Number one, it ensures that the Bills would stay in Buffalo. If the Bills were to build a new stadium, they would be in Buffalo for a long, long time. Let's look at, at, at the facts of this. So my, my one is to go to Cleveland, a city pretty much just like us. Uh, actually lost their team, had to bring it, had to bring it back, uh, built that new beautiful stadium once they came back in the, about the year 2000. Uh, and they have a 30-year lease on their stadium, which means when they came back till 2030, which now they're already past halfway, uh, nobody could come in and move the team. You make agreements in there that if you tried to get out of that lease, that it would be so ridiculously expensive to get out of it that nobody would ever in their right mind get out of that lease. So with that being said, that's what I think the Bills need to do while Terry Pagula is here, although he's going to keep the team here and hopefully he's around for uh, a decent amount of years. Uh, he's still up there in age. He's still he's still older. Who knows what's going to happen after he one day goes? Is it going to be passed on to the family? Those are questions I don't know the answer to. But if the one one thing that we can ease my mind at night about the Bills staying in Buffalo, it would be the building of a new stadium that gives you a lease agreement that keeps it there for a long, long time. You can't move a team after it has a new stadium. Look at look at it. Look at what the rent you had. The, the St. Louis Rams had an old stadium, refused to build a new one. Now they're the L.A. Rams. And the same thing with the San Diego Chargers. They had Qualcomm, which was older than dirt, and now they're in L.A. as well. New stadiums, if you have a new stadium, it keeps it in the team in the city. And it, regardless of who buys it, and, it, and l let's say something were to happen to Terry Pagula and the rest of the Pagula family didn't want the bills and wanted to put it up for sale, one would think that, you know, hopefully they would just sell it to somebody who would want to keep it in Buffalo. You have no, I, I don't know this stuff, but I don't want it to leave it up to that. I want a stadium in place. And by building a new one, that is what you would do. You would guarantee that the team could be here for a long, long time. Now, now you might be asking, okay, so when do you start? When can you build this new stadium all and all that good jazz? Well, I got those answers for you. I'm pretty confident with the money that the Bagulas have put in to New Era Field since they bought the team, uh, that they're going, the, the lease ends uh, at New Era Field in the summer uh, or in 2023. That's how long the, the agreement is there. And as Bills fans, you know, we are five years away. It's not a ridiculous amount of time uh, to start asking this question of what's the plan after that. Construction takes a long, long time. I currently work for a baseball team uh, that's been building a stadium for five years, and they're a single A team. It takes a long time. You need to put these things in place a long before before then. So that's, I think, five years, which we're, which we're right at now. It's not a ridiculous question to ask. 
of where is this new stadium going to be? Uh, are we going to get a new one? Are we going to continue at New Era Field? And I think if you're – it's one thing I know there's a lot of attachments to New Era Field and Ralph Wilson Stadium and Rich Stadium, uh, but you got to hear me out and you got you want to have that new stadium. You got to have it because it ensures the team is going to be here in the future, regardless of who owns it. Regardless of who owns it, if you build a new stadium, it does not matter if you sign that lease and put absolutely outrageous prices and things if you need if you try to get out of it uh, that no person would ever in their right mind try to move the Buffalo Bills it's very very important I think we've forgotten that as Bills fans here in Buffalo uh, that this was a real concern after Ralph Wilson died that we were going to lose our team that we that was a concern and Terry Bagula came along and saved all of that but it's not gone until you have a new stadium I, wa- I was hoping the Bagulas came in and really talked about we're going to go after the new stadium. We need to get a new stadium and and nothing uh, and nothing has happened since then. It's you got to beg the question. And I think I've seen a lot in the comments of people talking about uh, you know no we don't need a new stadium uh, and it's not about I I love. I love uh, New Era Field. I absolutely love it. It would hurt to see it go. But but this, what my point is here is if you want to have the Bills here to ensure that regardless of who the owner is, that the team stays in Buffalo, it's building a new stadium. It's building a new stadium. That's what does it. It doesn't matter who owns it, and that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make for a stadium that I do love in, in New Era Field. But it's something you got to think about as Bills fans and question the Pagulas on and say, where is this new stadium? Do we have any plans? What is going on here? It matters a lot. It matters a lot. Now to the fun stuff uh, of, you know, let's say the Pagulas do. I, we do I, I mean, I love, once again, love New Era Field. But we do need a new stadium here. It's getting old. It's time. It's time to build a new one. Uh, so what do we do? Where do we go? Um, and here's a couple of options after reading a couple articles. And if you look at what happened with, when New York state did that study of possible sites in Buffalo of where the stadium could possibly go, uh, they kind of came up with two options. Uh, number one, kind of leave it outside of downtown, wherever that may be. There's plenty of room out there, even keep it in Orchard Park. Uh, you know, maybe not exactly in the in the parking lot, but you can kind of keep it in that same general area and just build a new stadium right there. And get out of here with these domes that I'm seeing in the comments. I'm sorry, I'm gonna come in here right now. Are you guys out of your mind? We're the Buffalo Bills. We are winter. We are football. Enough of these domes, dome comments. Enough of it. I don't want to see him anymore. That is so ridiculous. How awesome was that Indianapolis game? And you want and you guys want to put domes? Absolutely not. Get out of here with that. Uh, also, other things I'm seeing, uh, Batavia. Uh, Niagara Falls is a very interesting option that is outside of, uh, of Buffalo. And I think it makes a lot of sense for the fact that, obviously, you're right there on the Canadian border. We have a ton of Canadian fans that come uh, all the way, uh, a ton of Canadian fans who come from Canada all the way to Ralph Wilson Stadium right now. I think it would be cool to have it in Niagara Falls, and really we can just share it. There would be so many Canadians coming over, uh, and Buffalo would have easy access to it, access to it as well. It would. It's a cool and entertaining thought. Would it actually work out? Does it actually make sense? I'm not exactly sure about that, but. Uh, I think it's definitely an option. Do they have the room? Do they have the resources? There's a lot of other factors besides just do they have the land? Do they have the resources to handle traffic? Do they have the resources within the towns themselves to be able to ha- host uh, 70 to 60 to 70,000 people on a day? Does that town actually have the resources for it? Does Niagara Falls? I'm not sure. But it's fun to think about with Canada right there. I think it's something that they should at least explore and leave it open as an option. So uh, also, you know, uh, obviously the other option is, of course, downtown. And that, uh, after reading the study that was done, 
kind of by New York State. You know, it kind of it kind of made sense uh, to put it downtown, especially with the Bagulas as owners, right across, uh, you know, right where the cobblestone is, to put it right kind of in that. It makes some almost like a Buffalo sports complex. We're seeing them all over the place now. You see one in, in Los Angeles with LA Live. Uh, Philadelphia has one as well. A lot of cities are just putting or grouping all their stadiums together and almost making it into, uh, you know, a sports heaven, which kind of sounds like a good time. That would be fun to have. Uh, but is it is it realistic? Could you actually do it? I mean, we do have Sabres games there, but it's definitely not as much people as come out for a Bills game. Uh, but but here's the one thing that I warn about a downtown stadium. Everybody wants to have it downtown, uh, help the skyline, help downtown, help it grow, help it improve, put the new, sta- new stadium in. They can put restaurants and all that around, and I think it would be great. There's a lot of pros, but there's a lot of cons as well. And I think the biggest con um, has to be is the tailgating and the effect that it would have. As Bills fans, we pride ourselves on being – a tailgating town. Year after year, I believe it's SI or NFL.com ranks the best tailgates, and we're always one or two uh, as the best tailgates in the NFL, where us and Green Bay always go back and forth. Uh, Maybe a little biased here, but obviously I think we're the best tailgating city in the NFL. And part of the reason why that started is because we are out in the middle of nowhere in Orchard Park. Nobody cares what we do out there. We can start fires, we can jump through tables, we can be crazy. It doesn't exactly matter what happens because there's nothing to hurt. There's nothing, if a fire gets started, it can be, you know, obviously we don't want that to happen, but, you know, there's not a bunch of stuff around there where it exactly matters what happens in the parking lot. You put something downtown, that's going to have an effect on the tailgating. And I'm not just making this up. It's because I've seen it firsthand. I've seen the Bills play the Browns in Cleveland. They have a beautiful downtown stadium right on the lake. But here is the issue with it is because you're downtown, there's less room. So everything gets thrown together. For Cleveland, I was parked in a parking garage, tailgating in a parking garage. Could you imagine if Bills fans had to tailgate in a parking garage? That is not going to happen. People would be so upset if that were the case. Not a chance in the world uh, that I could see that, that ha- seeing Bills fans being okay with that as an option. And another, another problem, another place I've seen it is in Chicago. I've lived, th- I lived there for a while and went to Bills Bears. Remember that opening game a couple years ago? Fred Jackson threw the stiff arm on Chris Conti and the Bills won in overtime. Well, I was at that game. And of course, that was a ton of fun being inside the game for that one. But out in the parking lot, Chicago has one tiny strip of land, and everybody's and that part's fun, but it's very compact and very tight and not a lot of room to do stuff. And if you're outside of that area, uh, you're nothing. You just literally have to get inside the game and start having your fun because there's just no room for that for any of that to take place. Uh, so there's your biggest, I think, con with the downtown stadium. As Bills fans, are we willing to give up our massive tailgates? It's kind of made us famous over the past couple of years, and you would definitely have to sacrifice that if we were going to put a stadium right downtown, right next to uh, the the Key Bank Center. It's something you've got to think about. Obviously, there's going to be other cons, but honestly, I think for all of us here, that's the uh, the biggest drawback. Uh, as going to the games is our tailgating. We love to tailgate, and we cannot let that. We can't let that just go. We can't let that just go, and that's what happens when you are downtown. Uh, the other part of this, as well, that's going to be interesting to see about a new stadium is how much do the Pagulas ask the city of Buffalo to pitch in for this stadium? Now, obviously, this is talking if the stadium were to go somewhere downtown or at least in the city limits. But how much is put on the taxpayers' back? Uh, we aren't New York City. Uh, we aren't a, a huge market. Uh, I, you know, you Everybody knows we are blue-collar people. Can, we, can they put a lot on us as taxpayers in order to pay for this stadium? 
I don't think that is a possibility. It's going to be interesting to see uh, and watch that negotiation game. Uh, we love our Buffalo Bills, and I think we're willing to pay any price in order to keep them and ensure that they're here long term. Uh, but the Pagulas better be careful in the amount of money that they ask the city of Buffalo to pitch in for this stadium that is probably only going to be used eight times a year. Hopefully, if we make the playoffs, hopefully a little bit more than that. But even like concerts and events, how many times do football stadiums really get used? At, without a doubt, less than 15 times a year. Is that worth a $300 million, $400 million investment by the city of Buffalo? I don't know. I don't know if the Bagulas would ask that much, but they better be careful in what they end up asking uh, the city of Buffalo to pay. So to wrap this all up, give a little summary about it. I kind of went over the different locations, and I also went into uh, you know the uh, why it's so important that we have a new stadium. I think everyone as Bills fans should get on board with it. I think it's so obvious that we need a new one to ensure the future of the team. Just look at Cleveland, who signed a who came back in 2000 and signed a 30-year lease in their stadium to make sure that the Browns were going to be there for the next 30 years. Could you imagine if we could guarantee that the Bills were going to be here for the next 30 to 40 years? I would do it in a heartbeat, in an absolute heartbeat. It's something that we always have to deal with as a small market team, the possibility of our team moving, in, especially in an NFL today where they can move just like that, where we had two teams move, I'm sorry, three teams move in the matter of two years. It's a possibility in the future because who knows what happens with Terry Pagula. Uh, you know, he's up there. He's not old, old yet. Uh, he's not knocking on death's door by any means, but he is up there in, a, at, in age, and it's a question as a Bills fan that you need to ask. So look for that new stadium. Want that new stadium. Be on board. I know you have a lot of great memories in the Ralph real, Rich Stadium, New Era Field, whatever you want to call it. But to ensure the future of this franchise, you need that new stadium. No doubt about it. So I also told you I was going to debut a new segment today called a walk down memory lane. So one of my favorite things to do as a Bills fan is kind of go back through old rosters and just look at the old players and kind of reminisce on their on those types of players because they bring back a lot of memories. If I throw out a name, let's say like Nate Clements, that it just stirs up memories. Maybe at an interception in a game that you were at, and you know, it just looking back on these players brings up good memories. Even though the Bills might have not have been that great, you you all you always look back kind of fondly on those different types of people. Uh, so today, the debut of this a walk down memory lane. We're talking about Takeo Spikes. Uh, I think an absolute fan favorite in Buffalo. TKO uh, wasn't here for a long time, uh, but definitely made his impact on his franchise. And you see on Twitter now uh, him from time to time repping Bill's stuff. He's still a massive Bills fan, and it's fun to watch. So he was here from uh, just from 2003 to 2006, and he was one heck of a linebacker for us, really, no doubt. Uh, you know. Uh, 80, he played, or he had 70 tackles in 2003, 2004, uh, 61. Not absolutely great numbers, but definitely solid numbers uh, for a linebacker in this league. And he was just the heart of the defense. I don't think we've really seen anyone. Obviously, Kyle Williams fits in that category. But between them, I can't really think of anybody else who was the heart and soul of a defense. Remember him, and I believe him and Lon London Fletcher played for a couple of seasons together, and what a linebacking core that was. Uh, but he was just such the heart and the soul. And I remember, never forget, I was at a game that he played, and he got injured and carted off the field, and everyone was chanting TKO, TKO, TKO. Uh, you know, just a fun player, a good player, and still part, still cheers for the Bills today, even though he didn't play here for a while. Uh, one of those players that started their career somewhere else. He was in Cincinnati before, and they come to Buffalo, and they just fall in love with the city, with the fans, and the way that we support our team. Takeo Spikes was one of those players 
Uh, and one of my personal favorites, uh, really when I started uh, really watching Bill's games and really getting into it, Takeo Spikes was that player that I just fell in love with, just wanted it so, so badly, loved it. And, you know, that's that's the type of players that we look for in Buffalo. Uh, kind of, you know, just kind of reminds me still of uh, – it's, it's it, it just brings back so many memories, like going to the comments – uh, comments now. Uh, never should have let TKO or Fletcher go. Yeah, looking back on it, absolutely, Patrick. Uh, think about that linebacking core, especially. I mean, TKO was great, but he had a, he fought a lot of injuries. But London Fletcher went on to be a great linebacker for the Washington Redskins. I mean, he was fantastic, making a couple Pro Bowls there in Washington. But that crew right there was so scary, scary good. Uh, so I guess it's kind of turned into a walk down memory lane for Takeo Spikes and London Fletcher, two great linebackers. And I don't really uh, remember having that great of a linebacker since. Obviously, Preston Brown, who left this season, was a pretty good one. Uh, we had Paul Plus Lesney for a couple of years, one we probably should have held on to, still in Jacksonville playing, or he may have just retired, but he was there right after he left the Bills, went to Jacksonville, and was their linebacker for a long, long time there. Uh, but uh, since then, we've always kind of struggled at the linebacker position. I guess Kiko Alonso might be able to fit in there as well, but uh, was just the legend of Kiko only lasted a season for us and uh, all kind of all gone away now since he's been in Miami. But, you know, to, definitely Takeo Spikes, a player uh, that we remember with good memories here in Buffalo, and especially for me as a Bills fan, it looks like for you guys as well as – uh, somebody we really we really loved here uh, in Buffalo, and yeah, Patrick, no leader like TKO. Absolutely, there was no leader like TKO. So, with that being said, we'll wrap up a little bit here. I know the Loyola and Michigan Final Four game is going on right now, and I feel like most people are tuned into that. Uh, but we made this whole show without talking about the draft, and that's what makes me happy because we're still so far away with so much to happen before then, and I feel like it's just been beaten to the ground. I'm glad we got to take a refresher from the draft and look at some other really important things that are happening with the Buffalo Bills. So that's all I have for Fandemonium today. Enjoy the final four games, uh, and just remember the draft is still like 24 days away, so just be careful. Don't talk about it too, too much. Give it two weeks, and then we're really going to dive into it because, uh, obviously, this is going to be one we'll remember for a long, long time as Buffalo Bills fans. So that's all I got. Thank you all for tuning in today. I'm Joe Lorendi, and this was Fandemonium. <laughs>